hello guys welcome back to the show today i'll be taking you through a tutorial on how to connect a flux application to a react application so basically what we are going to do is to create an api using flux and connect the flux server to the react front-end application so i've created a directory called lezione and from here i will use the npx command to create a new react application so I will do npx create react app I'll call it app so for those of you who do not know what the npx command is um, if you're from a python background um, it's like pip basically how you do pip install something pip install flask pip install pytest um, the npx command lets you do the same thing that's what basically the npx the mps command is doing right now so i said mps create react app app i'm basically telling the mps command to create a new react app that i can then use to create the front end of the application okay so we have the react app has been created as you can see right over here it says i should cd into app and then i can use yarn start to start my application um, but I would like to start from the flux the server so let's go into um, let me clear this out let me type LX so you can see we've got the app over here I can see the into the app and then from here I can create the server so the way I like to create this is that I like to create like a virtual environment inside of the virtual environment I can specify which Python version I like to use so basically when I say virtual environment what I really mean is that it's like creating a new world an empty world and inside of the world you have all the dependencies that you need to create the application that is basically the virtual environment inside of the app directory where I have everything installed for the react application I will make I'll create a directory called API. All right. I'll cd into API and then I'll do virtual env and I'll specify the Python version that I would like to use, which is Python 3. Then I'll tell it the name of my env. I'll call it anything that you want. I'll call it venv. Okay. All right. So I've created the environment that I want. You see venv. But I have to activate that environment. And how do I activate that environment? I can use the source, venv, bin, then activate. Oops, I think I missed something. Let's go again, source. So I've activated my virtual environment. And from here, uh, if I show you pip list, you can see that I've only got pip, I've got setup tools, then I've got wheel. So I would like to install my flask. So pip install, install flask. Okay, so if I show you again, the difference. Initially I had this, and now I've got all of that. And I think one thing I need as well is um, .env, python.env. If you're from a JavaScript background, um, python.env is like creating an env. I think they've got like an npm, install.env something similar it's like creating an, an environment where you can store your um, your secrets and all that stuff so um, I will create a pip install python.env okay so I have everything I need to start the the flask application basically touch um, I call it api the py so if I sh come over here and then show you API, I've got api.py. So I will modify this script and then create a simple Flask application. So import Flask from Flask. Then I will create an instance of the Flask application. So app Flask. No, this flask. And I'll pass it the underscore underscore name. Then I'll create an app. If anyone goes to slash, then I'll give it the methods. 
So basically, if you don't give it the method, the automatic or the default is a get, but I like to be explicit and then tell Flask which method I would like to use. So the HTTP method basically, and then define, I'll call it API. Uh, I'll say, if you go to slash API, I'll call it. So if you go to API method, um, what I would like you to return is return a JSON object. So return um, a JSON object and um, I can decide to give it anything that I want. So user ID title, I'll give it a title called Flask React application and I'll set completed to false. Okay, let's create the .env file where we can specify the environment variables that we want for the Flask application. So I will say um, touch um, .env, I'll call it, and then vim.env. Okay, I say I. Um, so I'll create, I'll set the Flask application to api.py. So I'll say flask let's go up I'll set it to api.py then I'll set the um, the the server basically to development all right EMV I'll set it to development so I can now save this and then move on and start the application and make sure that everything works before we can go to the front end of the application escape and then so if we start the application flash run see the application has been started on this server so um i think we ma i made a little mistake so i said import flash from flash which is wrong um it has to be from flash import port flask and this should resolve the issue. So if I go back and I refresh the page, reload, flash API. So Flask automatically converts this to a JSON and I can use this inside of the application. So we have everything working. When I refresh the page, you know, it loads as well. So we can go to the front end of the application and then make sure that everything works there as well. So I can go back here, go to the um, source directory. Um, on the front end, we've got an app to CSS, we've got an app to JS. Um, we're not interested in all of that. What we're interested in is the app.js file. And we make a little bit of configurations inside of the um, inside of the package.json. Actually, let's start that right now. Instead of the package.json, what we need to do is to create a proxy. Um, so the proxy means is that whenever I make um, a request, if the React application cannot find that request, it would default to the request that I've sent, I've set up using the proxy. So proxy, and I'll set the proxy to this right here. All right, to this URL right here. So I'll set a proxy to this. So that is that. Then what I can do is that I can let the React application start the Flask application for me. So inside of the scripts, I can put um, a script here saying start Flask um, API. So when I say start Flask API, I want you to CD into API. So CD API like that. Okay, so I can say that when I do that, say cd into API, and I would like you to run the Flux server. So I can do this by saying v e and v, then Flask. I'll say run. A little bit of problem. So basically, what what have, what about that over here? I've set a proxy saying that if I make a request and then you cannot find um, the request, you cannot find the server to that request use this proxy URL for that request. And I've set up in the script, statflask.api, statflask API. When I use npm run statflask API, it will cd into API and then run flask. So you can see the server is not running anymore. Let me say npm 
brand start flask api the flask api has been started and voila we have it running again so i can now focus on the front end and connect the front end to the back end this is very easy to do let me start the the react server as well so i can start the react server by doing um npm start you can see we've got the react server running and it's not anything special it's just like you know the usual stuff so i will clear this a little bit out i'll get rid of everything here get rid of this as well and then start um, making the changes that i would like to make right so in order to make a request if you're from a react if you know react or you've used react before what you can do is that you can i can import um, use state then i need use effect as well so what i can do is to create an initial state so const um, initial let's say data and then set initial data which can be use state it's an empty array then i've got my object in there all right so i can go back in here and say that use effect use effect takes a function it takes a callback function and what do i want to do when i call use effect basically what i want to do when i call use effect is to make the request to to the server to the slash api endpoint um set by flask so i can do this by saying fetch make a request to slash api dot then it's a promise you get a response right so i will say response i want the response the json all right then i can now say that once you get the response to json I would like to get the data so i would like to set the initial state to i would like to set the states basically to um to the data which has been sent by the flask api like the response what i get the data that i get from the slash api endpoint so set set initial state data to data all right so that has been done so um if i say actually let me just log this thing out so let's see console.log um, data and let's see what is being set what is being returned by the response and let's see if everything is working um before we even move on so let's check this out if i inspect console i can see that i'm getting an object and the object con contains basically what our what has been set inside of the flux application so i've got completed false title flux react application and then user id is one so let's just put that you know onto the onto the screen onto on here let's create like a h1 tag and let's put flux react application on there so that we know that the application or connecting the flux application to the react application has been set properly let's create a h1 tag and h1 tag um, initial data dot what is the name of this is called title right um, let's give it a name of, let's give it a title as well so you've said that the initial data um, dot title that is what we want we can check that everything is successful as you can see get slash api http response we're getting a 200 response which means it has been a success if we check the browser now it's empty because i haven't set the initial data to the response that we get from the flat and uh, from the flat server so what we can do is to come back here and instead of logging this data into the console what we can do is to set initial data to data okay so 
So again, we're getting a 200 response. It is making a lot of calls because we forgot to add um, something that we should be adding. Let's add this over here. So basically, the reason why it was making a lot of calls was that with the use effect, um, whenever Flask, whenever React refreshes, it makes the request, right? And when it makes the request, if we don't have this over here, it keeps making like a request, an endless request. So it's like a loop of requests going on. So we set this as an empty one so that it makes the request once. If you put in post over here, if you put in something over here, when that thing changes, uh, it makes the request again. But we don't want that anyways because we're just showing one thing. So we can go back to the browser. You can see Flask React application. So, and if I make a change um, in the back end, um, it should appear on the front end. So let's try again. If I make a change here, let's add a dot here. See, it appears automatically um, on here as well. So that is how you connect a Flask application to a React application. Let me run through again what we did, okay? How did I go about this? So inside of a Flask application, this is what I wanted the slash API endpoint to serve. It's just a JSON with the user ID one, a title, and a completed force, which I didn't end up even end up using. Instead of the React application, all I needed was that inside of my package.json, I set a proxy and set the proxy to this. Then I created a script over here saying that start Flask API, which is saying that CD to API and then run the Flask application. And all I'm saying on the front end, I'm using use state, use effect. I've set the initial state to an empty object. Then I'm using the use effect to make a request to the slash API endpoint, which is the endpoint which has been set over here. I'm getting the response dot JSON, and then the data I set the initial st the, the set initial data, which is the set initial data to the data that I get from the response. So this right here data goes into the initial state and I'm using that to get the title of the state of the response and that is being displayed on the front end. So that is how um, we do it and thank you guys for watching and see you next time.